open up with prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Father, open our ears that we can hear. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. You know, I remember the days back in the 2000s, fives on till about nine. I remember that I would come to church and I wouldn't want to talk to anybody because I was embarrassed. Everybody seemed to be having these wonderful lives and I've had nothing but trouble. It seemed like every time I turned around, I had an issue that I had to deal with. And I, I, I wondered what was wrong with me, that I was always in trouble. Why did I always have to, to go to God? Why did I always have to, 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 do, to, to, to believe God? Why did I always have to look for God to step in? You know what? So I could stand here and help you out of the same situations. If you will turn with me to Job 14.1. And I want you to notice I'm standing. I didn't die in all the problems. I'm still standing. Job 14.1, beautiful verse. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Thank you, Job. Did you know that was in the Bible? Now, go to 1 Peter uh, chapter 5. I'm going to begin in verse 8. I've had a group in the last couple weeks, a group, contact me with some of their issues that they were dealing with. There's a group. We're all in the fire. And it's hot. It's hot. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Don't share with us years ago, shared with me, that when he was in the Navy, they were getting ready to ship him to battle, to Korea to be on a MASH team. And anybody of you that have ever watched that program, you know what a MASH team is. A mobile, uh, what is it, a mobile surgical unit. Anyway, th th he was getting ready to ship there. And he said that the bad thing about that was everybody else had rifles, nice ones. The corpsman that he was gonna go had a pistol and a, and a white coat with a big red cross on it. He said it was a target. You know, the minute you start, the minute you endeavor to walk in the kingdom, not just be born again, not just go to church and warm up you, but the minute you want the kingdom, you got the target. You got the target. Welcome to the club. Now, how do we get out of it? Let's go back to 1 Peter 5. 8, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now I'm going to read a different version of that. I'm going to read the new Revised Standard Version. It says in verse 9, resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. It's a party. We all got suffering. I didn't know that. I thought I was the only one that had all the trouble. I really did. And, and I didn't have anybody in my family that was really helping much. Now, verse 10, but the God of all grace... The God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, we're just going to put him in the fire and we're just going to let him simmer. Ever been there? After you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Make you perfect. Establish you. Strengthen you. 
settle you. There will be a day if you will stay with this. There will be a day where you are in the middle of the fire and you are at peace. That's what God's looking for. Where you are perfect, established, settled, settled, strengthened. Where you can stand the fire and you can even laugh at it. That's where we've got to get to. Now, if you will go with me to Isaiah 53, I'm going to show you how you resist with your faith. Because now we know we've got trouble. That's not hard. we got trouble. How do you resist in the faith? Your faith is in the gospel. Your faith is in the gospel. It's not in a lawyer. It's not in a doctor. It's not in the, the banker. Your faith is in the doctor. I mean, in, in the gospel. Your faith is in the gospel. And then Isaiah 53, 5. One of my favorite verses. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities. Everything that got you into this trouble, it's now on Jesus. It says the chastisement, the chastisement, the punishment, the correction, what was needed to happen of our peace was upon Jesus. It was upon Jesus. There is a comfort to know that, you know, there are times when you think, did I cause this? Is this my fault? Am I in this because I screwed up? Am I in this because I messed up? Am I in this, did I make the wrong decision? You know what? Even that was put on the cross. Even that was put on the cross. If you messed up, that was put on the cross. If you were weak, that was put on the cross. It was put on the cross. Get it under the blood. That blood was shed. And it was shed for the sinner. It wasn't shed for the righteous. It was shed for the sinner. It was shed for the one that's in the trouble. And it was shed because of love of the Father. Don't forget God loved you first. Don't forget it was love for you that sent Jesus to the cross. It was love of Jesus to go to the cross. And when he was on the cross, he didn't die for your righteous parts. He died for the unrighteous. He died for the unrighteous. Don't ever forget that when you are in the fire. He died for the unrighteous. He paid for the unrighteous. He was ransomed for the unrighteous, for the ungodly, for the sinner. You don't have to make, don't, you don't have to beat yourself over the head. What if I caused this? It doesn't matter. It was dealt with, with the blood of Jesus, and it was dealt with his body on the cross. Isn't that comfort? Isn't that comfort? Where is your faith? How do you resist in the faith? This right here, the chastisement of our peace was on Jesus. Whatever it took. And that word peace is shalom. It's just like sozo. It means prosperity. It means welfare. It means safety. It means peace. It means quiet. It means health. Everything you need. You little sinner. You little unrighteous Everything you need was put on the body of Jesus. He paid for it. He paid for your prosperity. You didn't. He did. He paid for your health. You didn't pay for it. He did. And you know what? He did it out of love for you. You didn't deserve it, but he paid for it anyway. Isn't that a comfort? He paid for it anyway in the middle of your trouble you put your faith you resist with your faith and you resist in the gospel this situation was paid for on the cross how many i have seen how many troubles i have been through and i've been through some pretty hard ones and you know what i was never failed by god 
He never once failed me. Not once did he fail me. My house was, was um, what do you call it? Uh, it was put up for sale. He never once failed me. They were going to sell our house on the courthouse steps in five days. My eyes, one of my things I said a lot when I was in Frisco is, Father, my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. You know why? Because nobody else could help. There was nobody that could help. Nobody in our family had $10,000. We didn't have any credit. We couldn't get a loan. No credit. And it was negative. We had nowhere to look but God. You know what? That is a good place to be in. I had nowhere to turn. Nowhere. Father, my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. This has been dealt with on the cross. And I did. I told the Father, I wish if we can't handle this, if we've done something wrong. I said, if this, if this place is an idol, you know, I said, I, I told him, I said, then at least, least let us sell it and get something out of it. But, but it was too late. You know what? The Friday before the Monday. The Monday. Oh, I'll never forget this. The Friday before the Monday, then the 10000 was due. We had a customer walk in our sign company and order a sign, the largest sign we had ever done. We had never had one this big, price-wise. And he walked in, and he said, this is what I want, and I want you to do a bid. He did that, sorry, he did that on Thursday. Friday, he walked in. I showed him the bid. It was, it was 20 it was over $20,000. It was a monument sign. He said, all right, I want you to do it. I said, well, we're going to need a deposit. He wrote me a check on Friday for $10,000. He wrote the deposit check on Friday for $10,000. My eyes were on the Father looking for the mercy, and I got it. I, he has never failed me. Do you hear me? As long as I stayed with him, as long as I kept myself humble, as long as I believed with everything I could believe. I didn't have the faith then I have now. But I believed with all I could. And you know what? He has never failed me. Not once. Oh, you'll shake. You'll shake. Even the Apostle Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Thanks a lot. That it works. It works. The Father, that gospel will work if you will stay with it. I am encouraging you. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with your hand to the plow. Don't run. Stay with it. He has never failed. He can't fail. He can't. If you will stay with him. Now, turn with me to 1 Peter 1. We'll go back to this one. It says, Wherein you greatly rejoice... He's talking about the gospel walking it. Though now for a season, if need be, you be in heaviness through manifold temptations. Manifold. Not just one. Manifold. That's various sorts of it. Oh, don't we love that? We don't have just one trouble. We have five troubles. And we don't even want to look anymore because there'll be more. I remember the day when... The, the bank, I could not go to a grocery store and write a check. They were all bounced. They wouldn't take my checks anymore. I didn't know why. And I wasn't getting any clear answers. And everything in my garden died that, that summer. I mean, it, it just died. Died. And, and I had, uh, I, I was married to a man that wasn't answering any of my questions. The thing, the, the, uh, I was getting bills and, and, and things, and, and all I got was I'm handling it, whatever. You know, all this kind of stuff. And, and I remember telling the Father, I'm looking to you. There is no way out. There is nobody that can help me in this situation. Nobody. Money wasn't going to help it. Uh, 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 anything else. There was no help but God. And I kept going to him saying, my eyes are on you. Something has to be done. Something has to be done. We're dying here, Lord. My eyes are on you. You know, I got a phone call. And everything changed. In a minute. 
and um, well, it took it took a couple months for it to work out, but God intervened. God intervened, and I walked out of that situation not owing anybody anything. I walked out of that situation clean. I walked out of that situation where my children were taken care of, and they are prospering. They are prospering. They are doing very well. Not one of them is not prosperous. God intervened. He never will fail. He cannot fail. Do you understand that? The word of God cannot fail. The scripture cannot be broken. The word will be here after we're gone. After the earth is gone, the word will still be here. There's where you resist with your faith. There is where you stand. The Apostle Paul said, and having done all, stand. Stand. Eyes on Jesus. Eyes on the Father. Stand. Stand. You get it? You believe. He has never failed me. Not once in all those years. Never. And he won't fail you because he's no respecter of persons. Stand in that gospel. Believe that gospel. Trust in that gospel. Commit to that gospel. And it will bring you through. Amen?